Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to the video for what is tick prerequisite actor. To start off with, I can guarantee I'm gonna mess up the prerequisite part at least multiple times. I hate the way they've got it combined together, and it's annoying to say. So just a fair heads up. Let's run through our example. On the top left, we are printing out the tick of these three spheres, actor one, two, and three. And you'll notice the order, or lack of order. They're all firing off in the pre-physics group. You can change the groups and that'll change when they fire off. But if they're in the same group, actors tick basically when the engine decides it wants them to tick, based on whatever it feels like. When I click my button here, we're gonna notice this random ticking order change into an organized ticking order. Now you'll notice it's the same, three, two, one, three, two, one. Technically it's one, two, three, but it prints out the latest one on the top. But you'll notice they're in order now. There's no deviation. And that's because we're using the tick prerequisite actor nodes. Let's go ahead and check this out. All I'm doing for my actors here is simply having them print out when they tick. Actor one, two, and three simply print when they tick. So I'm not doing anything inside of there. What I am doing is using the add tick prerequisite actor node. And let's go ahead and look at that. So if we type in tick prerequisite, which I have a hard time spelling half the time, and we uncheck context sensitivity, we're going to find a bunch of different versions. What we're going to work with now is going to be our add tick prerequisite actor and the remove tick prerequisite actor nodes. Technically, we're not even going to work with the remove one, but I'm just going to show it. But if you notice, there are eight different versions. We have the actor version and the actor component version. These target an actor or an actor component. So if you're using an actor, use the actor version. If you're using a component, use the component version. And then we have the add tick prerequisite component for actors and for actor components. And these basically add in prerequisite components to the actor. And these are completely separate nodes and these are not covered in this video. We're just going to cover the basic add and remove tick prerequisite actor. So how do these work? They take in two inputs. If we were to go ahead and compile this, we have an error. We need to have a target connected. The target is going to be who you are talking to. The actor we want to talk to. The actor we want to tell hey, you need to wait. So in this case, it's going to be this one right here, which is going to be my actor two. And the prerequisite actor node is basically going to be, who are you going to wait for before we run what we want? Now this long example here might look a little convoluted, but basically what I'm doing is I'm saying, go ahead and get actor one that's in our scene. So it's gonna be our little sphere here. Tell actor two that it needs to wait till actor one ticks. And then over here, I'm doing the same thing with actor three. I'm telling actor three, it needs to wait till actor two ticks. So this way I'm enforcing a one, two, three tick order. So that's basically how it works there. You're telling your target to wait for the prerequisite actor. I hate that friggin' word because I cannot say it properly. But basically, who are you talking to and who are they waiting for? And this is the tick prerequisite, which basically means, hey, who are you waiting to tick before you tick? That's all this node does. It says, hey, actor two, wait till actor one ticks. Hey, actor three, wait till actor two ticks. And of course, since actor two is waiting for one, we now have an order of one, two, three. So we can enforce an order. If you wish to remove that, you'd use the remove tick prerequisite. Say actor two, stop listening for actor one, and then it's gonna remove that required order. Now, as you notice there, all I did was simply change our random order into a fixed order. And that's the point of this. It's useful if you have to have something run tick maybe you need your players tick to run because your tick is updating the position of a component on it 
before a child updates because it wants to update a material or a graphic or a line trace or something. If you need something to have the most accurate data based on something else, go ahead and set up a prerequisite actor hierarchy here and have the child wait for the parent to make sure it's finished. And I say child parent loosely, it's basically someone wait for something else to finish. And that's pretty much it. It's not, it's a lot of talking to cover a very simple node, but it's important to cover how it works because it would be nice if it said like target and waiting for or something like that. But you know, this is epic. They name things how they name things. So that's it. That's going to wrap up the video. The add tick prerequisite actor and remove tick prerequisite actor nodes allow you to determine an order for actors to tick in when they're inside the same tick group. And remember the target is who you're talking to, who you're telling to wait for the prerequisite actor who is the person who will go first.